We've heard from Dr. Fauci testifying, uh, testifying in front of the Senate. Let's hear, hear from another completely unelected guy who uh, basically was able to, um, who is a, uh, the, the son of an heiress, is it Tyson Foods? Um, Swanson. Swanson, Swanson Foods, right? the frozen food uh, um, heir, um, who, which of course is a fully meritorious uh, position uh, to be in. Here he is talking about how, why are we listening to Fauci? He's not elected. Cool. Hey, man, he's old, but he's cool. But almost simultaneously, he said that nobody should ever shake hands again just to be safe. I don't think we'd ever should ever shake hands ever again, to be honest with you. Not only would it be good to prevent coronavirus disease, it probably would decrease the incidence of influenza dramatically in this country. Look, this is this is just buffoon level stuff at that point, And we're not doing this to mock the guy. You know, I mean, anybody who talks as much as Anthony Fauci does on television, we can tell you firsthand, is apt to say some stupid things. The point is, is this the guy into whom you want to vest all of your trust? Is this the guy you want to char- chart the future of the country? Maybe not. This is a very serious matter, the decisions we're making right now. Tony Fauci has not been elected to anything. He's had the same job for nearly 40 years. That means the majority of American voters never even indirectly picked him. Let's make it clear. His job for 40 years has been working on infectious diseases. And also, unless you're not aware of how this works, we're not listening to Anthony Fauci. We don't. We don't have to do what he says. And in fact, the White House is not doing what he says. He is the chief medical advisor on this issue. And whether we listen to him or not is up to the president of the United States and the governors. What what Carlson doesn't like is he doesn't want a an expert to have any exposure to the American public so that they can find out that the president isn't doing what the experts are saying. That's what the issue is here. I mean, can you imagine how despicable of a human being you have to be? Because I assume Tucker knows. Now, now Tucker, I will say this too. And I do say this. I don't say this to mock him. I say this to deride him. I know Tucker lied about his position on Iraq in, in public, on TV, at CNN, on Crossfire. I know that he would go out in front of Crossfire and say, we need to go into Iraq and then walk out in the back uh, of uh, CNN uh, studio, smoke a cigarette and say, I don't really care about this war. I just, I got to say it. And so this guy's up there now doing that same thing. He's probably walking out of wherever he's doing that from, maybe his garage, smoking a cigarette and saying, Fauci knows what he's talking about, but you know, it's my job. That, I mean, well, how much more despicable does that get? Well, it's really important to, yeah, totally. And also, this is the guy who was an outlier on Fox saying this is a real thing. He went to Mar-a-Lago and convinced Trump that this was a real thing. And I get, you know, again, credit where credit his is numbers due. went up and he started losing his uh, his entree to the White House. So, I mean, well, and also not- the political utility of it went down because yep. it's one thing to say that it, look, it, I think it's a real thing like, hey, for your own self-interest, you got to try to get a handle on this. We've all seen the results of that. It's terrible for the poll numbers. And it's also a real thing that I can use to juice up a new Cold War with China. I mean, there's a reason that, and some of these people have been right. I mean, look, Steve Bannon was right. You go back to his podcast in January, he's like, this is serious. We've got to act on this immediately. And the policy package is, and he has actually said, I'm talking about Bannon now, there are going to be Nuremberg trials in Wuhan for members of the Communist Party. Now, you know, as soon as you start making Nazi comparisons, I mean, all bets are off the table. Yeah. So I think that, you know, Carlson can leverage this stuff for a specific agenda around uh, China, as an example. And now it's like, I, you know, look, they've looked at it. They said, hey, this is already out of control. It's primarily affecting, frankly, poor people and right. demographics that right. don't vote for us. So, yep. eh. and yes, while we're at it, we don't want uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci. We don't want that 
cultural we don't want capital. The expert up there. We, we don't, don't want, want the that cultural to capital to accrue. Exactly, exactly. Keep playing. Let's see what else he's got. For the role he has now. This is not the result of any kind of democratic process at work at all. Yet in the last four months, Fauci has become one of the most powerful people in the world. And some, particularly in our media and in our democratic establishment, are clamoring to give Dr. Fauci even more power. Why? Some people seem to think he should be dictator for the duration of this crisis. That's insanity. Fauci, like every other human being, is flawed. He says things that are wise. He no, says things that are profoundly he's not silly. Flawed. He's not He should be He's dictator. not, and no one is the one person who should be in charge. When it comes to making long-term health recommendations, this guy, Fauci, may be even more off base than your average epidemiologist. Plenty of doctors, by the way, think it's time for most, even all of the country, to cautiously reopen. And they have a voice in this, too. They deserve one. But in the end, no appointed doctor should make the call on what our federal policy is. We elect leaders for that because we're supposed to be in charge of the country because it's a democracy. Remember NBC? The, the, this is so <laughs> this reminds me of Glenn Beck's czar talk. I'm sorry, Sam. But and, that's and, but what I think a, of. Yeah, but it's also it's all just com- it's complete straw men. It's complete straw men. No, there's no there's there's no one who is pushing for Fauci to have more powers. Who, I mean, like, by what manner? Like, who is pushing for Fauci to have more power? There are people saying we should listen to the experts more. But there's no one saying that Fauci should have more powers. This is absurd. And he doesn't give a sh about democracy. I mean, please. He'd be railing about the Senate right now saying, how come we have, uh, you know, 35% of the population controlling 60% of the votes in the Senate? If he was so concerned about it, he's not. Why are they expanding the Patriot Act uh, decades after the September 11th attack? This guy is just a hack, literally carrying water for Donald Trump. And he's doing it at the cost, perhaps, of thousands of deaths. Eh, What are you going to do? You know, I'll I, I think he got is... jealous of Hannity having that impact on creating more deaths uh, where Hannity's ratings were up. And now he's feeling like I need to feel that power, too, I guess. Well, it's very, but it's, you know, it's different branding because, you know, he Hannity was doing it when you're just being a lunkheaded moron. But now a couple of months in, it's time to sit down and coolly calculate right. grandma dying. It's just that, you know, Hannity did that too early. But, you know, I, I have to say, as somebody especially who... I have never uh, the quote unquote resistance has elevated any number of people that I don't like and find incredibly unimpressive and have been in fact counterproductive in hurting Trump. And the thing about Fauci is that number one, nobody's calling for him to have dictatorial power. Uh, Number two, I, I, and we were talking about this weeks ago, please could the resistance people, you know, the, the only questions they should be asking Dr. Fauci are, you know, is Donald Trump the best president ever or the best two presidents ever in your opinion, Dr. Fauci, you know, like any way you could praise him uh, would be helpful. And, and three, I I've seen him and he's very, I mean, he's, he's so, he's so meticulous in avoiding, you know, Rand Paul is going at him saying, we don't know if kids get sick from this. Maybe they should, go, maybe we should load up the schools and do like a, a vindictive public health experiment with millions of children. And he doesn't lose his cool. He doesn't say you're a psychopath. He doesn't say, weren't you the guy who swim in the, swam in the Senate gym uh, while you're waiting your test results on Corona? He just says, yeah, I think there's a lot about the health impacts on children that we haven't really documented yet. And I will say, Senator, of course, I'm I'm not an economist. I'm not an educator. So there's a lot I don't know. But speaking as someone who has some sense of the medical dimension of it, which theoretically you do as well, asshole, I would suggest let's not subject millions of kids potentially to this virus. It's an experiment. He kept his cool. Right. While he did that. I mean, his his whole demeanor and whole style is actually not – a sort of finger wagging, I'm the expert, shut up. It's sort of like, look, I'm just trying to look out for everybody, guys. <laughs> just trying to tell you what's in front of everybody's faces here. 
and the and level he's not of hate reminding and everybody, I was also totally right about the idea of a pandemic hitting. I should also oh, no. use that. <laughs> no, he's, he could have done that. You know, he's very classy um, about 